Well, first of all, I have to say, Nobu has sent us an insane replay that changes the landscape of hero decks. Are they a tier one deck? Is a mixture of every single one of the hero decks like actually viable? Well, then this video, I'm gonna let you guys be the judge, but Nobu is gonna be showing us an insane hero deck going against that one kid who is not only playing Solomon Greats, one of, if not the best deck of the format, he actually plays it really well. And if you guys want to send some awesome replays, have your video possibly or your replay possibly be shown on the Cali Effect King of Games, that's who I am if you guys didn't know, then go ahead and send your link or file to dualanalysis at gmail.com. Now, I would love for you guys to actually include a deck profile as well as a brief description. And then on top of that, follow everything that you see on the screen. But I'm taking too much of your time. Just to add a quick note before we get into this live duel is that decks that are from the Battles of Legend Heroes Revenge or from the new set Rising Rampage will definitely pique my interest, but let's get into this game. Nobu is going to lose the rock, paper, scissors bout, and he gets the opportunity to go second. That one kid opening up with a really good hand. Cosmic Cyclone, Solomon Great Falco, Spinny, Sonnet Manning, and Effect Veiler. Normally, in a Solomon Great deck, you're gonna open one to two hand traps. You play a bajillion of them, and then you'll open typically a combination of Spinny, Gazelle, or your Solomon Great Foxy, and be able to mitigate through that to make an insane board. Now, this time around, he does have the Sonnet Manning. And a quick quote to you, or a quick uh, note for you guys that are up and coming, trying to get into the Solomon Great concept, is that a lot of players will use Sinet Mining on that Solomon Great Spinny for double pluses. I'm telling you, it's amazing to be able to discard Spinny with Gazelle, then activate Gazelle because you sent Spinny to the graveyard, summon it, and do so many things. But then there's a lot of times where you do that and you lose it to an Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. It is the worst feeling ever. So just one thing I want to say about Silent Mining is tread cautiously. That one kid is going to start off by normal summoning Solomon Great Falco. And then he's going to activate the Cyanet Mining to send the Solomon Great Spinny. Fortunately for that one kid, Nobu has no Ash Blossom and Joy Spring to speak of. So he's going to be able to pretty much pop off with his combos. He's going to add Gazelle, special summoning the Gazelle because the Spinny was sent to the graveyard. No, Gazelle does not need to see the card sent to the graveyard to be able to special summon itself. And with that, he'll be able to send Solomon Great Roar to the graveyard. Continuing on with his combo, he's going to special summon Spinny. And then he's going to proceed to make some plays. Now, here's another thing I would like to point out to you guys is that Solomon Great Falco was probably the best Solomon Great card that ever existed in level form form. Right beside Jackal and or Jaguar and Fowl. Those cards are just great. These have other effects that even sometimes I forget. He's going to use Falco's effect to set that Solomon Great Roar back to his side of the field. And the reason why it's so smart is because at any given time, if Nobu does have a disruption like an effect veiler or whatnot, even a DD Crow, uh, well, I guess not a DD Crow because he just would a DD Crow with the, the set face down card or the uh, Solomon Great War trying to set itself anyways. The uh, that one kid actually mitigated that he doesn't have to make double sin like wolf this time because he used Falco to set the card back to his side of the field. Just big brain plays by that one kid. He's also going to follow up by making the Solomon Great Mirror Stallion. Salio detaching the gazelle. You guys already seen this. He's also going to be able to add Sanctuary through the Bay Links and then do all that other crazy Raz and Jazz. Special summoning Jack Jaguar back to his side of the field. Then getting his Salomon Great Bay Links to end on wood. So his board is going to consist of the normal Salomon Great board, which is a disruption through Salomon Great Roar or Rage. He's also going to have Bay Links and Sunlight Wolf. What a Mirage Stalio. His graveyard's looking pretty nice because there's a Bay Links in the graveyard to protect his cards from being destroyed. And he has the gazelle that he first played with into his hand. He'll also be able to put Spinny back into the graveyard, meaning that on the next turn, he'll be able to play Yu-Gi-Oh! But Nobu, oh man, he's open with the sauce. Double call by the grave. Even if that one kid opened up with double hand trap, something that Solomon Great can do pretty much with ease. Nobu has double called. He also has Fusion Destiny, Solid Soldier, Stratos, and Ferris. Now, the one kid does make a very questionable play as Nobu is going to start off by normal summoning the Elemental Hero Solid Soldier, you have to stop that with Solomon Great Roar. Like, it, it, you, you don't wait for the Shadow Mister, the Stratos to come through. You stop this card because getting this guy off the field, meaning that Elemental Heroes need their normal summon, right? 
and they need to be able to have multiple monsters in the field to pop off. If they have at least one monster on the field, they're good. So you stop that. But hindsight, if he did have Ferris, he'd still be able to use the fact. He can still pop off. He can still do some other things. So it's almost like a lose-lose situation as that one kid will be able to Solomon Grade roar the Stratos, preventing Nobu from searching. But Nobu does have the Fusion Destiny, so it doesn't really matter. These two monsters were pretty much bait. Fusion Destiny is stupid good because it allows you to fusion summon one Destiny Hero monster that, or a Destiny Hero monster from your extra deck, or I'm sorry, fusion summon a monster that uses Destiny Hero monsters from your deck in its card text. It's a little different as you can summon Destiny Hero in Dragoon with this card, but he's going to use Destiny Hero Celestial and Malicious to summon Destiny Hero Dystopia, guys. So Nobu is just, he's a genius right now. I, I, like and, and I don't even let me just pause just just to show you how genius that it is. First of all, Fusion Destiny does have a drawback. You can only special summon dark hero monsters for the rest of the turn. I'm gonna let you guys on in a little secret. This deck does not care. It literally does not care about this restriction. That's not a restriction for the hero deck. It is a restriction for the other decks that want to splash hero cards. As Dystopia and Extra or Elemental Hero Solid Soldier can then be followed up with a link. And then secondly, the cards that he sent to his graveyard are sneaky good. Malicious can recruit another Malicious. Destiny Hero Celestial can allow him to draw two cards. He has no cards in his hand. This man is setting himself up for success and it doesn't suck unless you're that one kid using both of those monsters for a link summon he's gonna make extra cross extra hero cross crusader who when it's link summon allows him to special summon or target one destiny hero monster in his graveyard and special summon cough cough any of the monsters he just sent to the graveyard for a fusion summon and an effect dealer is going to be met by that you guys should already know cold by the grave so Ash Blossom and Effect Veiler, step aside. Those Cold by the Grave will be able to stop you. He'll be able to get that Destiny Hero monster to his side of the field. Here's the crazy thing. Cross Crusader actually has other effects. It allows you to tribute a hero monster or a Destiny Hero monster to add a hero monster from your deck to your hand with a different name. So he's going to be able to tribute that Malicious. And even if he didn't have the Vision Hero Ferris, if he had another hero monster, he can get a Ferris for it to be summoned to his side of the field. Vision Hero Ferris has some amazing effects. So let's go ahead and pause this so we can read it. Actually, I think we can hit play. You can discard one hero monster to special summon this card from your hand. One hero monster. This is crazy how Vision Heroes, Destiny Heroes, Elemental Heroes all come together to play one deck. It reminds me of that meme with the three hands together <laughs> or the two hands that are shaking. And it's like Elemental Heroes, Destiny Heroes. Okay, you guys don't understand, y'all kids. Anyways, he'll be able to put the Vision Hero increase because of Ferris to his side of the field. And then he'll be able to banish Malicious for Malicious. He can then use the effect of his Vision Hero increase, tributing the Destiny Hero Malicious to summon itself. And guess what this card does? It summons a Vision Hero monster to your side of the field. Now, you guys should already know the best Vision Hero monster before the Battles of Legends Hero Revenge is Vision Hero Vion, because not only does Vion send Elemental Hero Shadow Mist from your deck to your graveyard, which allows you to add a hero card from your deck to your hand, you also get that hero card from your deck to your hand. He has three monsters on this field. He can use Vision Hero Vion's other effect, banishing a hero monster from his graveyard to search a polymerization. And yes, Nobu plays polymerization. This deck is insane, guys. How can you not like what the new age heroes are able to do is just still blowing my mind how Vision Heroes, Destiny Heroes, and the Elemental Heroes have kicked Neo Spacious to the side. Just like, we're just going to be a deck together. So he's going to be able to polymerization, fusing all three of his monsters for Big Daddy, take your ass home, son, Vision Hero Trinity. And what this guy does is not only does he double his attack for the rest of this turn, he can attack three times. Whoa, you made a 5,000 attack attack monster that can play through that one Solomon Great Disruption because if you don't have those hand traps or just an optimal hand, he can attack all three of these monsters and you got to search a right. Elemental Hero Honest Neos. Boy, you better get out of here. This deck is, wow, it is the wowzers, ladies and gentlemen. Just fast forward and get to the next game because you already know that Visionary Trinity is too strong. Now, the deck does have weaknesses. 
but every tier one deck has weaknesses going into our first play it seems that that one kid again is way smarter than the average Solomon Great player. The Noble Noble actually has the effect Veiler hitting the Solomon Great Gazelle. Some people may disagree with that card choice, but the thing is that one kid has the coal by the grave. He can stop the effect Veiler and pop off with his plays. Realizing that he's in the exact same position as the very last game, in my back of my head, at least I'm thinking he's like, mm, Nah, I don't think that that's a good idea to use the call by the grave to stop the effect Veiler. I'm going to go for the Gusto, knowing that my the, the opponent's vision hero monsters have to be able to manipulate the graveyard or his hero monsters. He can actually use that call by the grave a little offensively. Using both of his monsters, he's going to go ahead and make Mirostalio and then proceed with a regular Solomon Great play. As you guys can see, he's doing the double sunlight wolf thing, playing with himself, touch, I mean, you know, doing stuff. And Nobu is going to start off with Visionary Ferris into the increase in the graveyard. He didn't draw the best hand in the world. Red Reboot is definitely something that we're like, okay, that's great. Stop your opponent's trap cards, make the Visionary Trinity again, and win right here because it does not matter. But um, yeah, that call by the grave is going to come in handy. Send, using Visionary Ferris to send the increase to place the increase, he's now going to try to activate the effect of his Vision Hero increase to be met by, that's right, that called by the grave. That's going to banish the Vision Hero increase in his graveyard and prevent Nobu from being able to use Increase's effect to summon. But because it was a trap card, he'll be able to summon it to his side of the field, resolving its effect, yada, yada, yada. So Nobu is at a huge disadvantage right now. Vision Hero increase on the side of the field. He can attack into the Solomon Great Bay Links, but that one kid, nah, I think I'm just going to stop you from doing all that. Fortunately for him, he does have the mash change, changing his Vision Hero increase into, I mean, the card that heroes have always loved. Like, seriously, I've showed you so much Yu-Gi-Oh between this hero deck. You guys forgot about the star of the deck, the boy. He's going to make Vision Hero Anki, Anki attacking into the Mirstalio, and now he can't use the Mirstalio for an obvious link to bounce Nobu's that's right, using Anki's effect, he's going to get a second copy of Mash Change and then use it into your boy, Danky Fresh. Master of Dark Law banishing all cards your opponent on your opponent's side of the field and punishing them for searching. Man, who could have forgotten that this Vision Hero, Elemental Hero, Destiny Hero, OTK deck can still make a walking one-sided macro cosmos that punishes your opponent from searching cards. I, I never would have thought. He's going to summon it under the Solomon Great Sunlight Wolf, which allows that one kid to recur the Mirror Stalio. I don't think this is a bad idea because it does get the monster out of the extra monster zone where Dark Law would normally have to go. But I, I just hate giving my opponent advantage. He's going to take that little bit of damage, set the red reboot phase down, and then pass his turn to that one. And that one actually just happens to draw the outs this time around. He's going to get the Solomon Great Foxy. And then he's going to use the Solomon Great Foxy as his normal summon. Uh, Foxy being able to reveal three. He's going to get Solomon Great Circle. Dark Law is going to hit the effect Veiler using both of those monsters for a Heat Leo, which actually has effects. He can shuffle in that face down card, which if it were something critical, Nobu would have lost it. And then following up with Solomon Great Circle to add Solomon Great Foul. He'll then be able to second summon his Heat Leo using Solomon Great Sanctuary. And then he'll be able to gain the effect of his Solomon Great Foul. After that, he can use the Solomon Great Foul for Salad Balix. And then both of those monsters for a Link Summon into what is considered, I still consider this. This is probably the best Link 4 monster in the game. Boral Sword is great. Boral Load is great. Don't get me wrong, Boral Loading would be awesome. But just because this card's requirements are just, they don't exist. It requires monster special from the extra deck and at least two. The Boral Load and Boral Sword require at least three. And this card literally will win any battle against a special summon monster. Like, this is the best Link monster, Link 4 monster in the extra deck. If there's a hierarchy, Saryuja is one of those cards that should be hit. But this is the go-to guy in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. If you ask me, it'll, it's just amazing. It's going to allow him to get over the Mask Hero Dark Law with ease, but still, you guys have to look. If Nobu had a little more luck, maybe if he drew the Vision Hero Vion and he's able to pop off with some different plays, he could turn this game around possibly. Kind of not really because Avermax can bounce his card, so it's still pretty 
you know i mean even if just summoning shadow mist and turning it into al mirage I, I again i'm just saying if nobu had a better hand it still becomes a problem because mech knight crusadia avermax and it looks like nobu was actually going to concede this game because i mean he can set the shadow mist into defense but he's like you know what Cali probably wants a short game. He's probably running out of material to say. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and scoop and then go to game three. I can imagine that's what Nobu says because he loves me. Okay, it might not be. It might not be love, but still. Going into game three, ladies and gentlemen, I know you guys seen it. Wow, was that, was, was that a real hero deck? Yes. It played almost nothing but exclusive hero cards. Solomon, great player. That one kid is actually really saucy himself. Doing some of those plays that not a lot of Solomon Great players may pay attention to. This time around, Nobu's going to be able to get to go first. He's going to summon that Solid Soldier and then be able to summon that Elemental Hero Shadow Mist. Boy, this looks like a normal combo. Discarding the Ass Blossom and Joyous Spring. Nobu's then going to just set two cards face down and then pass his turn. I bet you guys are wondering, this deck is fragile. It's just a one-trick pony. If you can get two disruptions, then nah, the deck's not that good. Well, this Solomon Great Hand is actually really good. Foxy, Spinny, Circle. I mean, almost every single time, you're guaranteed to get that. And he gets his normal two hand traps with Ash Blossom and Infinite Imperm. So this is probably one of the highlights you're going to get with Solomon Greats. He's going to reveal three no targets for his Solomon Great Foxy. So that's not the greatest. Let me go ahead and fast, it, fast forward this. Using that to get the Gazelle, he'll turn the Foxy into a Bay Lynx or however he wants to do it. And this is the huge misplay. My boy Nobu activates Super Polymerization, which should be a game stealer. After that one kid uses Foxy for Link Summon into Bay Link, Super Polymerization can rob both of his monsters and give him a Solomon Great Violet Chimera. Unfortunately for Nobu, he uses it on two Solomon Great monsters and he doesn't play uh, Duplex Chimera or whatever. It just requires two Solomon Greats. So not only does that one kid get some very valuable information, the card in his graveyard, he also sees, oh, this card can stop me. Nah, <laughs> I, I don't think that should happen. Let's go ahead and Cosmic Cyclone, that super polymerization, which would have been detrimental to me being able to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So big oof by nobu and i think he would have had this game in the bag if he didn't make that mistake which i mean sometimes it's just how the cookie crumbles not everyone can play perfectly a hundred percent of the time actually no one can play perfectly a hundred percent of the time everyone makes mistakes but i hope that nobu's mistake can be a learning experience for not only him but you guys as well He's then going to go ahead and make that Solomon Great Bay Lynx, not opting to use Bay Lynx's effect to add the Sanctuary because he feels that Nobu's phase down card is a mass change. And if it is, he'll lose a card in his hand. Then using both of those monsters for an XE summon into Murat Stalio. And that's just another thing. Like, this deck can play mind games with you. He literally didn't add advantage to his hand because it's like the chance of Dark Law, which again is a smart move. Mirror Stalio being able to summon Jack Jack. And then, of course, he does the normal Salomon Great shenanigans. Setting a card face down or, or using the effect of Mirage Stalio. Here's where I think that kid did mess up. He uses Mirage Stalio to bounce the Solid Soldier. Now, my big beef with that is that Solid Soldier activates when he's normal summoned. He literally just gave him a card that gives him advantage. As opposed to uh, getting rid of the Shadow Mist, which gets him a search. And now that Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf is staring down a monster that will give Nobu advantage. So I do think that one misplay pays for the other, that being able to preemptively activate Super Polymerization, meaning that the Cosmic Cyclone would have hit the correct card or incorrect card, that's hearsay as it's going to be made up for that one kid bouncing the wrong card. The universe fulfills itself in mysterious ways. Mainly because the Cali Effect really wanted a saucy game, and that really does help. So, going into this, he's going to summon the Jack-Jack, add the Gazelle, and attack over the Shadow Mist. I, I can't really say that that's a mistake, because leaving Shadow Mist on the board just gives him Link Fodder, or whatever he wants to. Nobu's going to add Ferris, and then he's going to, that one kid is going to use Jack-Jack for Bay Links and pass his turn. Pretty decent board with a Solomon Great Rage and an Infinite Impermanence. It looks like Nobu is going to have a hard time playing around this board. Nobu opening, drawing the Super Polymerization, not the best card you want to draw. He's going to go ahead and normal summon Elemental Hero Solid Soldier and use its effect to special summon a monster to his side of the field. 
or no, he's actually not even going to do it. What are you doing, young man? He said, nah, fam, I'm so mean with it. I'm going to take that solid soldier plan and do a whole nother scheme with it. Use a pol polymerization to fuse the solid soldier, the celestial, and the vision hero, Ferris. He is going to make Big Daddy Boss Monster, ho oh, man, vision hero Trinity. Hey, this guy Again, is the reason why Solomon Greats and Link Monsters, Link decks alike, have to fear heroes. It can attack three times, 5,000 attack. Do you know what that does to a poor Solomon Great Bay Lynx? I don't even have to tell you what uh, meme it would be with, uh, you know, six Visionary Trinities and one Solomon Great Bay Lynx. Uh, maybe that's a little bit untasty for you guys but he's gonna use the solomon great rage in response which should get over the vision hero trinity did you guys forget that red reboot is a great card not only does it negate the activation of solomon great rage it allows him to set a trap card to his side of the field but you can't chain to this and then red reboot says your opponent cannot activate trap cards <laughs> for the rest of the turn so vision hero trinity 5000 attack can attack twice that's right can attack twice and that one kid is not looking nice. He will take 4,500 just off of this interaction right here. That's crazy. And then he'll take 2,100 off of the Solomon Great Sunlight Wolf interaction. So, yeah, it's one of those days. Oh, and did I forget to mention that he got an Elemental Hero Shadow Mist because of the effect of Elemental Hero Solid Soldier? I didn't? No? Okay. That looks like game, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. Post down below in the comment section is Elemental Heroes or Hero Monsters because you can't really call it a Elemental Hero deck anymore. Is this a competitive deck inside of 2019? I think it makes a strong case to be a very, very solid contender in the meta. And possibly the Forbidden List might change it up. So let's get you guys to that deck profile. All right, so again, I got to say Nobu's deck profile is unique. He's running three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, one copy of Destiny Hero Celestial. This guy didn't get to use his effect, but um, when his card declares an attack, you can target one face-up spell card your opponent controls, cough, cough, pendulum, <laughs> field spells, and destroy it. And if you do, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Well, you have no cards in your hand, something that this deck can do. You can banish or accept, and, and accept the turn it was sent to the graveyard. You can banish this card and when Destiny Hero monster in your graveyard, draw two cards. <laughs> what? This card's literally one of the best Destiny Hero monsters ever printed. Um, I, I don't understand why he runs Dyn Attack. I think it's a very bad card. But maybe somebody in the comment section or, you know, Nobu himself can clarify. But during damage calculation, either player's turn, when you would take damage, you can discard this card. Make yourself take no battle damage from that battle. And if you do, each player takes 1,000 damage. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Talking with Destiny Hero monster you control against 1,000 attack until the end of your opponent's next turn. I... I just don't see it. I'd rather run like Diamond Dude, another Celestial, anything. I, I I don't see it, but again, you guys could probably help me. Two copies of Destiny Hero Malicious. One copy of Destiny Hero Plasma. This card is a walking time bomb. This card's insane. You can summon it by tributing three of your monsters, and then it's a one-sided skill drain, and then it can snatch one of your opponent's cards on their side of the field. This card's like, it's stupid. Three Effect Veiler. One Elemental Hero Honest Neos. Double Shadow Mist. Double Soldier. One Stratos. Three copies of Vision Hero Ferris. Two copies of Increase. Th two copies of Vion, one a hero lives, three called by the grave, three emergency call, one foolish burial, triple fusion destiny, triple mass change, polymerization, reinforcement army, double super polymerization. For the side deck, triple dino wrestler panka traps, triple droll and lockbird, triple ghost ogre, triple evenly matched, and triple red reboot. For the extra deck, one dystopia, one anki, double dark law, one dian, one dragostapelia, one violet chimera, one Starving Venom, one Visionary Trinity. I mean, let's face it. You only need to summon this card once to win. 5,000 can attack three times on monsters. That That's insane. If you play Big Bang Shot, I mean, that's what I was doing. And United We Stand, because, you know, I'm just that savvy. Uh, one Boral Sword Dragon, one Nightmare Unicorn, double Cross Crusader, one Extra Hero Dread Decimator, and one Extra Hero Wonder Driver. Well, that is pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Love this video up. Let's try to get the 500 likes. I tell you what, we get to a thousand likes on this video. I would consider doing a genuine live duel with this against another one of the great decks. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.